Hey everyone, so Ben Shapiro was recently on a college campus and a student got up and asked him how he can continue to support the actions of the IDF with so many civilian casualties and so forth. Take a look at this exchange and uh, let's uh, talk about it in just a minute. As an American Jew, how can you continue to condone the actions of the Israeli government, condoned by the US government in the Gaza Strip where over 40,000 people have died, including Palestinians and Israelis, in large numbers of children and civilians. How can you continue to condone those actions? Okay, so, okay, hold on. I want to I wanna correct you. I don't just condone the actions of the Israeli Defense Forces and the Israeli government. I celebrate and loud them. I'm not morally apathetic about what's happening. On October 7th, Hamas launched the most deadly war on Jews since the Holocaust. They killed 1,200 innocent people. They took 250 hostages. 100 of them are still being held hostage. I know members of families of hostages who are still being held American citizens. Hamas could end this war today by surrendering. They've chosen not to surrender. Instead, they spent billions of dollars building terror tunnels below civilian areas. It is not incumbent on the Israeli government to surrender just because terrorists are evil enough to hide behind civilians. The Israeli government has gone through such extraordinary efforts not to kill civilians that it has managed the best civilian to terrorist kill ratio in the history of urban warfare, and it is not close. I personally know soldiers who have gone door to door in the Gaza Strip who have risked their own lives to prevent civilian death. Israel has complete and utter air superiority over the Gaza Strip. Turns out that Hamas doesn't have an air force. They just had a series of, series of tunnels where they hit all their leadership while their people suffered after their people voted for them. And then they effectively established a dictatorship over the course of the last 20 years. Israel, with their complete air superiority, certainly would have had the ability to commit full scale human atrocities had they wanted to. They have complete air superiority. They could have used F-35s and simply turned the place into a parking lot. They did not, in fact, do that. They moved vast scales of population. In fact, believe it or not, there have been more births in the Gaza Strip since the beginning of this war than there, than there have been deaths in the Gaza Strip from the war itself. That is a very poor way to conduct a genocide. Israel is being more meticulous in the conduct of this war than any army in human history, and certainly than the United States Army in its vast role in the history of, of urban combat. That is, that is uncontested. What, would Israel, what is Israel supposed to do? Simply say that you get to play tag, you take Israeli citizens, you kill 1,200 people, you hide behind a baby, you hide behind a civilian, and now Israel has to preemptively surrender? That is a great way to make sure that terrorists always win. What Israel has done ought to be celebrated by the Western world because they've demonstrated that if terrorists decide to launch a war they cannot win, they will be eviscerated from the face of the earth as they ought to be. Do you not want ceasefire now? Do I do not, not want, want a ceasefire until Hamas is destroyed and all the hostages are back. I want, and you know how that could happen? It could have happened October 6th. There was a ceasefire on October 6th, and then there wasn't a ceasefire starting on October 7th, and there could have been a ceasefire again on October 8th, even after all of the death. If Hamas had surrendered its top leadership to international justice, if it had released all of its hostages, and if it had turned over its rulership of the Gaza Strip to some sort of decent body that wouldn't have reinstalled terrorism at the top of the food chain. I mean, what, what exactly is the excuse for, for Hezbollah getting involved in the war? Hezbollah isn't even in Israel. Hezbollah has nothing to do with Israeli territory, and they've been launching 8,000 rockets between October 7th and now. Now it's more like 12,000 or 13,000 rockets, hundreds of them every week. What, what, what is the justification for that? There is only one way to defeat terrorism, and that is to win. You do not win wars with ceasefires. You do not win wars by losing. In your speech, you mentioned that there are scavengers who like to tear down and there are lions who like to build up. Are there not some institutions we ought to tear down in society, potentially like the Israeli Defense Force? <laughs> um, I think it would, be an, it, would be, it would be an act of the gravest evil to even make that contention, simply because the Israeli Defense Force stands between seven and a half million Jews in Israel and complete slaughter, and by the way, over 2 million Arabs and complete slaughter who are citizens 
of the state of Israel. The only security and peace in the region right now is being guaranteed by the Israeli military. That is the only force standing between that region and continued chaos. The destruction of the IDF is the destruction of Israel. That means a genocide, a true genocide. The thing that everybody likes to ignore in the Middle East while they're claiming genocide and while they are claiming apartheid is that there's only one area in that specific area that is free of one ethnicity and religion, and it is quote unquote Palestine, which has zero Jews living in it. If you drive through the West Bank, there are giant red signs. If you drive into the Palestinian Authority area, saying Jews are not allowed in here. And if you drive there without the permission of the Israeli government as a Jew, you will be killed. If you're a Palestinian and you accidentally make your way into Israel, nothing will happen to you. You will go back to Nablus in the evening. If you make it through the checkpoint accidentally, you'll go back. And if you're a Jew and you accidentally drive into Ramallah, you will not emerge alive. That is not, if we are talking about which force here is a force for good and which force here is a force for evil, there is no question what the distinction is. If we're going to talk about institutions that ought to be torn down, we should start with the legacy media, which seems to have radically misinformed you. This is eminently true. Uh, every, every single word uh, of that was 100% true. Uh, the only way to win a war is by actually winning and defeating the terrorists. You can't put out half of a fire and then expect that everything is going to be good. You have to eradicate the system in which the terrorism develops, and that is how you create. It's not just creating random ceasefires for the sake of a temporary opportunity for the terrorists to regain their power and infrastructure in order to only attack you again. You have to root out the cause of the problem, and that is radical, uh, radical ideas, radical ideologies in that region that need to be uh, that need to be wiped out. Obviously, all civilian deaths are. Uh, as he said, all civilian deaths are a tragedy. And at the same time, it can't be justified that the IDF is supposed to just back down and surrender because Hamas and Hezbollah and other evil organizations like them decide that they're going to uh, uh, hide themselves behind baby carriages. The IDF do not become the bad people because the Hamas terrorists decide that they're going to hide in civilian populated areas. The IDF needs to do, and they are, as Ben Shapiro uh, correctly pointed out, they are they are conducting the most meticulous uh, urban warfare in the history of mankind. And it's it is a shame that the that that there are civilians that are that are getting caught up in the crossfire and that, that Hamas is specifically using civilians as human shields. That is very sad, but the entirety of the blame rests squarely on Hamas.